I finally got my hands on a base model M1 MacBook Air and we are going to compare it to my current workstation, the base model MacBook Pro 16. We're gonna see how fast the M1 MacBook Air is, we're gonna see how little power it sips and I've also got a thermometer gun here to see just how cool everything runs when compared to Intel parts. So smash the thumbs up if you're excited and let's get started right now. Selamat pagi! Good morning everyone, Kenneth here and welcome to another random drop video in the middle of the week. I just wanted to see just how fast the M1 is and I feel like I should share it with you guys. So before we get into the test, I want to explain to you how I will do the video. I have prepared the same file here on both computers. We're going to uncompress Final Cut Pro. We're going to see how the performance is when editing video and exporting stuff like that, as well as comparing the SSD performance. We have Geekbench 5, Cinebench, and at the end, I'm going to run Unigen Valley in the background and see how the thermal performance is. Disclaimers first, these computers are bought by myself. Everything I said is my own honest opinion, but I know this will be an outrageous comparison actually. This is just 999 base model M1 MacBook Air and this is 2400 new base model MacBook Pro 16 with Radeon 5300M. So let's get the test going starting right now. Actually I want to show you this uh, browser test first and we're gonna start with speedometer. Let's see right now. I'm gonna start this test together and you can see that the M1 MacBook Air flies through the test. You can see right here the progress bar is almost like 50% now whereas on my MacBook Pro 16 it's like 1 25th of the progress bar or something like that. Plain crazy the M1 MacBook Air is already finished right now 218 score plus minus 3.4 and actually we're just gonna skip the speedometer because my MacBook Pro 16 will take a lot of time and I've got my results beforehand here 70.9 plus minus 18. So what this basically means is it measures the responsiveness of web apps so if you do a lot of things inside your browser like Google Docs, Microsoft Office and the web, we're just gonna see by ourselves how much more responsive the M1 is when compared to even like something twice or more the price. Got Canva.com prepared here. Uh, we have a couple of like just very simple four page video presentation here. You can see the performance difference when I scroll both of these like very quickly like it's much much more responsive on the m1 macbook air it's just no contest like we can see how fast how that number 70 compares to 210 like working in real life here anyway i forgot to unplug the power here let's unplug it right now and as you can see right here we're on 100 percent on both laptops we're gonna see the ssd speed let's start a speed test okay what used to be on a macbook air is the ssd wasn't quite as fast when it compares to the macbook pro even the 13 inch model but as you can see right here that's 2100 right and 2900 ish on the read speed and on my macbook pro 16 we have 20 around 2400 2500 there and 2700 on the read speed the macbook pro still wins but not by much again this is a 512 gigabyte model and this is 256 so that may factor in the cast of the larger space that i have on a macbook pro 16. let's move on to the next test right now here i'm just gonna see how fast the uncompression is and we're gonna click same time all right so they're both expanding and we can see already the m1 is ahead by a pretty good margin like i would say a 10 percent 20 percent faster and it's already finished there this is just still at the middle of the end compression. You can see like that is already much faster on the M1 MacBook Air. Okay, right now this just finished here. All right, so let's move on to the next test now. We're just gonna run Geekbench 5 here and this is on Intel, this is on Apple Silicon. I'm gonna run the CPU benchmark right now. So the test is going to end on both sides. Power usage is pretty much the same thing, about seven, eight watts on the uh, M1. And on the Intel part here, the i7 we have Ho ho, I've seen it like spike until 70 watts before. That was crazy or 90, 100 watts. Ooh. 
that's just insane. The turbo boost here we have and actually the M1 finishes first. Actually, I think this is a bit lower than what I got 1,700 before on single and 7,600 on multi. So I think this is because the MacBook Air has reached its thermal limit now and it's actually quite hot. Temperature in the middle here, that's 42.8. On the sides here, that's 39.5 and 39.8. So the score actually dips quite a lot. We lose like 2000 score from the multi-core and around 100 on the single core. So you definitely have to keep this in mind. The MacBook Air is not for you if you are gonna use it for prolonged periods. But anyway, it still competes with my MacBook Pro 16 using 100 watts and this is like one tenth of the power used. By the way, keep in mind that my room is at 27, 28 right now. It's quite hot, I didn't even turn the AC on. <laughs> Moving on to the next one, actually I did the compute test as well with metal that's on 5300M that got 24,000 basically. And on the M1 Air we have 18, 1800. Quite an impressive feat for the M1 MacBook Air to get anywhere near the dedicated GPU on the MacBook Pro 16 here. That's amazing. Anyway, let's move on to the next test here. We have Cinebench R23 and I'm gonna just run one run off the test here. And by the way, keep in mind that the MacBook Pro is already pretty hot. It's already throttled down to keep the temperatures in check. But if you want to see the fresh numbers, I did that beforehand. We have 6,866 on the M1 Air and 7,172. So again, to get even close to matching the MacBook Pro 16, the i7 6 core here, it's just insane. <laughs> so we can see here that the fans are kicking up already and we're using 80 watts. And on the MacBook Air, that's around nine watts. You can see here the fans are on full blast. We're just gonna give it a moment of silence. CPU at 96 degrees and we have here the SOC is at 70 degrees <laughs> chilling right here. MacBook Pro 16 is still faster. It's 7,000 points right here on the 10 minute run. Scored 6,700 on my MacBook Pro 16, whereas on the M1 Air, it's gonna drop to 6. 1000 basically 2000 score difference all right so moving on to final cut pro we have this project on both laptops here this is a real project of my soundbeats h1 review just a note here i don't edit 4k this is just a standard 1080p project 24p but i do edit without proxy so no background rendering at all as you can see this uh, small dots here. So I'm just editing on raw files and on better quality there and let's see like the timeline performance first before we get into export time and we can see right here that just jiggling this thing around the M1 MacBook Air is so much smoother than my MacBook Pro 16. That is such a difference wow zooming in and out as you can see here it kind of jitters a little bit skips jumps here and there and on the m1 macbook air that is just so much smoother that's amazing how much power we're working on right now just like sitting on the timeline right 73 degrees celsius we have five watts <laughs> how is it going on the macbook pro 16 now 25 watts. All right, so let's just export both of these 14 minute video on a 1080p preset for YouTube and Facebook. And we're gonna see both on faster encode. Let's see which one finishes faster. All right, a couple minutes has passed and we're gonna see 40% on both sides. They're pretty neck and neck, which is pretty interesting, but we see how much noisier the MacBook Pro 16 is. This just, of course, it's famous. Wow, cool. Actually, it jumps from 50% on the MacBook Pro 16, went straight to finish. Oh, it's just like 50%, what? But anyway, we saw the power usage was on like 70 watts or something on this MacBook Pro. It should be around six, seven watts on the MacBook Air here. It's gonna ramp everything up by running Unigen Valley here. Uh, they're both on extreme presets. If I'm going to start fresh on both laptops here, on the M1 MacBook Air, we have 81 frames per second beating Radeon 5300M by a pretty significant margin. But take these results with a pretty huge grain of salt because this is not even showing up. But just to back it up, actually the GPU usage is still 
at 100% even when the screen is dark. So this should be the real performance of the M1 GPU here when compared to the AMD GPU. We're just gonna see how hot this thing goes. MacBook Pro 16, we have 46 degrees Celsius here. That's very, very hot. But on the side here, we have 42 and around, yeah, around the same thing on both sides here. Whereas on the MacBook Air, the center got into 44.5. So it's not that different anyway. This still gets hot if you just keep it pinned. And on the sides, we have 40 degrees. It is considerably warmer on the palm rest and the battery side here. That's 36 degrees. Whereas here, that's still 36 degrees. But anyway, like feels like a little bit more uncomfortable here. Measuring the back side now, we can see here that's 43 degrees Celsius and 40 on both sides, 39 actually here. And on the M1 Air, we have 42 and 40 on, yeah, both sides. One thing to keep in mind, this thing gets quite hot on the upper part here, much more uncomfortable if you're gonna use it on your lap. Because I thought, why buy the MacBook Pro? The only addition is that touch bar, bigger battery and one fan, right? Turns out that one fan could make all the difference, keeping the thermals in check and also the performance, which is gonna be similar to my MacBook Pro 16, which is just plain crazy. So last but not least, let's check out the battery. Right now we are on 83% and 75% on a 100 watt hour. This is like, what, 60 watt hour or something? Just put it right here. But the real difference will be when you are going to use the MacBook Air for Safari browsing, like office files, or even watching videos. This will last a very, very long time. Whereas compared to the Intel MacBook, already gets hot when you do those simple tasks. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the comparison. I hope this was at the very least like entertaining or if it helped you in any way. As you can see, I run some daily tasks basically. This excels at all that and that is very impressive and I'm very looking forward to the M1X or whatever the next generation Apple chip will be. So that's pretty much it for the video. I hope it was at the very least entertaining or if it helped you in any way, please let me know down in the comments below because that would mean a lot to me. Also follow me on social media if you want to ask me anything. Thank you so much for watching once again. I'm Kenneth. I will see you in the next one. Bye.